Okay, so if you want to do well in algebra, you need to understand a lot about the absolute value function. And uh, absolute value is a big topic in algebra. And what we're going to be focusing in on this uh, video is how to solve an absolute value equation. All right, so here is the problem. We have 8 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3, and this is equal to 16. Now we're trying to solve this absolute value equation for x. And uh, if you think you know how to solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct solution in just one second, then I'm going to show you exactly how to solve an absolute value equation step by step. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer again. 8 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 16. What is x equal to? Well, actually, there are two solutions. So x is equal to negative 1 half, and x is equal to negative 5 halves. Okay, so if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus, and if you're like, I'm Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not going to do well in algebra because I didn't get this right. Well, that is not the case, right? So just because you don't understand something or you made an error doesn't mean that you can't do well in algebra. But uh, you certainly need to know the specific steps to deal with an absolute value equation. All right, so let's go ahead and get started right now. All right, so the first thing is this. When we're talking about absolute value equations, we just first need to kind of re, uh, review what is absolute value. Well, in mathematics, when you see these bars like this, that's an indication that you're dealing with an absolute value function, okay, an absolute value function. So there's all different uh, types of absolute value problems, okay? Let's not confuse the, uh, uh, them. Just quickly, when you're dealing with absolute value, you're going to be asked to do the following, okay? You're going to be uh, asked, if you're taking, again, any kind of sort of algebra course, maybe like the algebra one level or above, you're going to be asked to graph absolute value functions, okay? You also can be dealing with absolute value inequalities, all right? That's another big thing that you'll uh, need to know how to do. So you got to know how to graph them. you got to know how to uh, deal with inequalities, and you're going to have to know how to solve equations, and you're going to need to know what absolute value is and have a good understanding of the definition of absolute value. So let's go ahead and cover that right now because I think that will help you kind of uh, understand how to solve absolute value uh, equations. All right, so just absolute value in general, okay, the definition of it is effectively the distance a number is from zero. Okay, so if somebody was to say, hey, what's the definition of absolute value? It's the distance a number is from zero. So let's take a look at two problems here. If I said, hey, what's the absolute value of negative three? If I just had that as a question, most of you would be like, oh, it's three. And uh, a lot of students kind of misinterpret what absolute value does for us. They go, oh, it just gives us the positive version of, the, of any number. So if you got a negative number, it makes it into positive. Well, yes, it does, but that's not the definition of it. So let's take a look at the absolute value of 3. The absolute value of 3 is also 3. Now, what does that mean? Again, these are like questions, right? Where it's like, hey, what's the distance negative uh, 3 is from 0? That's what this is saying. So let's take a look at our nice little lovely uh, number line here. So here's negative 3. So here's 0. So if we kind of measure the distance from 0 to negative 3, it's three units away. Just kind of imagine you took out your little tape measure like this and you measured from zero to negative three, it would be three units because distance and displacement is in positive units. Okay, that's how we want to think about it. So it's three, uh, negative three is three uh, units away from zero. Matter of fact, three, if I ask the question, how far is three away from zero, it's also three units away. Okay, it's the same distance, right? So this distance is the same as this distance. So that's why the absolute value of negative three is uh, positive three, and the absolute value of three is also positive three. So let's take a look at this nice, lovely equation. If I said, what's the absolute value of x? I have some mystery number, and when I take the absolute value of it, the answer is three. Okay, so what could x be? Well, x can uh, either be uh, two numbers, right? They could either be negative three or three. Both of these numbers work to give us an absolute value of three. So the first thing I want you to remember 
is when we're dealing with absolute value equations, there's always going to be two solutions. Always, always, always two solutions. So going back up here, notice we have two solutions. That's why I was kind of trying to be, you know, uh, uh, purposely uh, general about, hey, give me the solution or solutions to this equation because eh, I figured that didn't want to give too much away in terms of hints because a lot of you are like, oh, I know there's always two solutions to absolute value equations. So anyways, let's just kind of set up the big picture about what absolute value is and why there are uh, two solutions to these equations. Okay, so now here is basically the steps, and this is kind of like a not a perfect way of seeing the steps uh, to solving absolute value equations. If you want to see like a really nice step-by-step-by-step uh, breakdown of this, uh, two things. Well, actually, I recommend a few things here. One, um, in my notes, uh, I have, you know, like really kind of detailed procedure that you should also have this in your notes if you're learning how to solve any particular type of equation. But if you really, really need help, additional help in absolute value and all these particular, uh, particular topics that I talked about, I would suggest checking out like my Algebra 1 course. Okay, you'll get the notes, all the procedures, and you'll learn how, you know, pretty much everything you need to know about absolute value, but let's just kind of quickly general, uh, generally uh, list some steps. So the first thing you want to do is, uh, and I got this as step two because the first thing I wanted to kind of list here was just an understanding of absolute value, what it is and why there's always two solutions. But basically when it comes to a procedure, the first thing you want to do after, you know, obviously understanding that you're looking for two solutions is you want to isolate the absolute value function. Basically, you want to get this absolute value part of the equation on one side, one side of the equation all by itself and some sort of number on the other side. Okay, you'll see how this is going to work here in a second. But that's what we need to do. We need to take steps to isolate this absolute value part and get, all the, get a number on this side of the equation. Once we get to this um, stage in the problem, we're going to go ahead and set up two equations. And then we're going to solve those respective equations and the solutions to those equations will be the two uh, two solutions to our absolute value equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this now. All right, so when you're thinking about solving um, an absolute value equation, this is the part that you're trying to isolate. Now, here is something I really, really want to stress. Let me just make up something uh, real quick. Let's say I had 8, uh, absolute value 2x plus 4 equals 10. Now, these numbers in here, okay, or this whole thing, this whole absolute value part right there, all these numbers inside, pretty much just think of this as one big variable, okay? This in terms of your first step, i.e., let's just think of this as a variable x, like 8x is equal to 10. So if you were to solve this particular uh, equation, you're isolating this part. Just think of this as a big variable. So here I can, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, divide both sides of the equation by 8, so x would be equal to 10 over 8. But this x is really that absolute value part. Okay, so you need to kind of think, kind of be able to conceptualize um, this absolute value function part like so. Okay, so for some of your students out there, it might be a little bit confusing, but just kind of think of this as one big variable for the first phase of this problem. All right, so let's uh, solve for it, or uh, in other words, isolate that. So what I want to do is divide both sides of the equation by 8. Okay, again, this would be like 8x uh, is equal to 16. And this part of the equation is this part right there. Let me go and erase this. Okay. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable, and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so we're going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 8. And you can see here I I'm, uh, end up with the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to 2. So this is kind of the first phase of the problem. And uh, these equations can get much more exciting 
um, and much more detail. But there's another thing I want to stress here that really confuses a lot of students. So let's suppose um, we had, let's say, 48x plus 16 is equal to 20. Let's say we had an equation like this, and you're like, oh, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 4, right? Because we're isolating this part of the problem. That would be correct, okay? But here is where a lot of students go wrong. They uh, oftentimes think they can divide this 4 into what's inside the absolute value function, right? So they'll go like, oh, uh, that 8 gets divided by 4. That's 2x plus 8. You cannot do that, okay? This stuff in here is pretty much off limits. It's, in, it's, it's inside the absolute value function. So algebraically, you can never like divide into these terms with a number like this, okay? So this is a kind of self-contained function. It's Don't confuse this with parentheses or any kind of grouping symbols because that's not what this is. This is a function, okay? So in other words, if I had two parentheses, 4x plus 8 equals 20, or okay, let's just kind of do it this way, and I want to divide both sides of the equation by 2, but then you could factor out the GCF, et cetera. So anyways, I don't want to go off on too many tangents, but this is an important uh, uh, point to stress because I see uh, this mistake, this misunderstanding a lot. Okay, And, you know, think about it. How many homework pages, qu test quizzes have I seen over the decades? Maybe 100 million. Well, not that much. I mean... <laughs> I am exaggerating, but a lot. Maybe it felt that way for me, but you see the mistakes over and over, uh, you know, the same mistakes over and over through the years. So I'm, I'm telling you right now, some of you out there are probably making that mistake. Don't do that. All right. So anyways, here we are. We're down to this part of the problem. So remember, once we isolate this absolute value function right here, there's nothing in front of it, nothing underneath it, and we have it equal to a number. Basically, we're ready to set up two equations, but let's just think about this real quick. What this saying is this, hey, absolute value of this thing, all right, 2x plus 3 is equal to 2. So if I gave you a uh, little question here, let's kind of do it like this. The absolute value of something is equal to 2, all right? Like, well, you know, we don't even need to put a variable in there. I just kind of went up to you and said, hey, listen, I took the absolute value of some number and the answer was two. What is the number? So you'd be like, oh, that's easy. It's a uh, negative two or two. Okay. When you take the absolute value of negative two or two, you get two. So you're like, oh yes. So two X plus three is really uh, the numbers negative two and two incognito, right? It's trying to hide. It's like, you know, trying to, you know, uh, disguise itself. Um, as a number, but we know what the number is. We're like 2x plus 3, we know you are uh, either 2 or negative 2. Okay, now of course math isn't, you know, some sort of game of hide and go seek, but you know, we want to try to explain this stuff in a fun way. All right, so now we're ready to do our last part of this problem, and that is to solve these um, uh, last two equations. So the setup here is we're going to take what's inside. Uh, inside the absolute value, and we're going to set it equal to the uh, the positive version of that number, which it will always be positive 2, and we're going to uh, take this whatever's inside here and set it equal to the negative version of that number. That is the procedure, okay? But I wanted you to understand why it is that case, because this number must be equal to 2 or negative 2, because the absolute value of 2 or negative 2 is the only way we can get an answer of 2. Okay, so now finally we're just going to go ahead and solve these last remaining equations. And here we're going to go, go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides. We get 2x is equal to negative 1. If you don't understand this, you need to review basic equations um, and the like. Of course, you can find all that in my pre-algebra algebra 1 course. So when we solve this, we get x is equal to negative 1 half. Here we're going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. We get 2x is equal to negative 5. Divide 2 by both sides of the equation. You get x is equal to negative 5 halves. All right, so x is equal to negative 1 half, x is equal to negative 5 half. These are the two solutions to this absolute value equations. Now, actually, absolute value equation, okay? Now, let me stress one of the things here. Um, when you learn how to solve absolute value uh, equations, you're going to be very happy. You're going to be, oh, look at me. I am so awesome in algebra, which you are. But here's the deal. When you learn how to master this and then you move on to inequalities, absolute value inequalities, uh, what ends up happening 
is on uh, major tests or quizzes where you're dealing with absolute value equation problems and inequality problems. I've seen this 10 million times as well. Students confuse the procedures. They'll start doing um, for inequalities like the procedure for equations and uh, vice versa. So how you solve an absolute value inequality is quite different than the way you solve an absolute value equation. So again, you know, mathematics is a game of organization, all right? There's just a ton of information and a ton of skills. So that's why it's imperative that you have great math notes, okay? And you want to make sure that you understand the steps and the procedures. And more than that, you need to see examples. But start off with easy problems and build your way up. But don't try to learn math by just like uh, full-on memorization. Be like, oh, when I see this, I do that. That's not a good way to do this. What you want to do is master the concepts, right? So that's why when I teach a problem, how to do one problem, really what I'm trying to do is teach you the concepts to this type of problem so you can kind of like absorb that, learn that, synthesize that, and apply it to be able to solve, um, you know, problems of this different type, okay? But just remember in algebra, it's just a, a kind of game of building up uh, your overall math toolbox skill by skill by skill okay so i hope this video helped you out and if that's the case don't forget to like and subscribe now if you need additional help in algebra check out these courses right here so pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra but uh, if you are further along in mathematics then you may want to check out my algebra one or algebra two courses now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math, algebra, and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.